So a lot has been made about Mentors, the mentorship system, and the novice network over the years since its inception, often with extremely one-sided, unobjective comments or opinions formed. Mentors are all in it for the crown. They all suck. I'm so awesome and cool and would make a great mentor but never will become one because I'm just that awesome that I don't need to. Stuff like that. I, for my part, have been a mentor since near the day it came out. I refuse to abandon the system like many have. Which is why I decided to make this video as one who has seen, done, and experienced so many different events within this system. I can offer a viewpoint no outsider can. While I don't think the viewpoints of those who don't use the system or such are inherently invalid, they even bring up some very good points. I do feel that many of them look at the system with eyes clouded and no small part of personal bias. I want to foster discussion and further real suggestions for improvement to the system and real improvements to the community as a whole. This is a topic I am passionate about and I refuse to give up on it, because what matters is what the system was made for, and my opinion isn't any more valid than anyone else's. I'm just some idiot who managed to have a platform. I'll be a bit performative at points, but know for sure I am aiming for good faith discussion here. And on that note is why I will ask here something I normally don't. Please rate, comment, subscribe, share this around, etc. The sheer size of this video is nothing to scoff at, and to get across all I wanted to say and prove is taking a lot of work. And if we want to get any real discussion going, spreading the word around is going to be how we do it. This is going to have a weird structure, but my initial plan is to first go through all the feedback on a poll I held on my community page and Patreon and Discord, talk about a couple conclusions I came up with, then go on to deeper analysis on individual feedback and criticisms of the system. This will include feedback on the polls and general comments I've seen about the system over the years. And then I intend to tear into basically all of these criticisms as a fantasy and how you don't know anything about how people really work. Alright, let's get started. Let's sum up the numbers of the poll. To start, we have 1,646 votes at the time of writing this paragraph. That means the 16% positive experiences amount for 263 votes. 66% neutral is about 1,086 votes, and the negative 18% is 296 votes. One vote is unaccounted for due to rounding. This is actually better than I expected given how loud the vocal minority is about how bad the system is and how rude they tend to be about it. The neutral bit actually gives me hope that people actually can be swayed and possibly even convinced to attempt to improve the system, because I do want the system to work. I want people to be helped and all that good stuff. But what I find most interesting is what happens when you start reading replies. Most interesting to me is the spread of people who named specific servers. Five had bad novice network experiences, one was decidedly meh, and 19 were positive. And the bad experiences come with caveats. One of them, I can't even tell if they use the novice network at all, and they were just saying the system in general is bad. But let's give that one the benefit of the doubt. One was very, very contradicting a rant about how the novice network is bad, but also Siren has a really good novice network. So which is it? Is it good or bad? I, I can't tell you. You can't even tell. One of them gave no feedback to whatsoever, just I don't benefit from it, which that's not even necessarily because of novice network. One was complaining that nobody gave tips, which... What? Is that saying nobody answered your questions? Or do you expect people to randomly just spout random tips into the ether? And the fifth one was explicitly negative, and I truly feel for them if that's the experience they had to go through. And there's a lot of similar feedback across all of the comments. 
Many of the topics I intend to go in depth on, but one comment stuck out to me in general I want to bring up now quick. Why would you even want to know how to do that in terms of macroing gear sets? That was the feedback someone received from a mentor in the network. I don't know how specifically the question was worded, or if gear sets were specifically mentioned, but let me say as a mentor, the fact that macros were brought up gives me pause. As a mentor, it's our job to guide players towards good habits and away from bad ones. Macros are one of those nearly explicitly bad things to steer people away from, at least in the battle side of things. So that you would be questioned is fairly expected. You should want to see this be steered away from macros with the exceptions here and there. Another comment mentioned that one novice was flamed for asking too many questions. What is flaming? And do you know the full context? I've had dealings with people who outright refuse to accept answers or give feedback. For an entire day, a player kept complaining very loudly about needing money, about no fates existing in zones that clearly had fates around them, and ignored the answer of just do the story like 20 times. They only needed a few hundred gil, which even one story quest would fill that order. Oh, and they said they were on free trial, so no, giving them money wasn't even an option. They would at no point accept any feedback or suggestions, and kept complaining over and over about the exact same issue. One random experience isn't the full story. That mentor might have been awful and needed to be gone, I will give you that. But that novice might have also been a troll, and whether or not you want to believe it, that is often the case. Again, personal experience, a lot of trolls make their way through. A lot of people have gotten really uppity about trolls getting kicked and such, and we've had to mention their months and months of bad behavior, including acting like a stalker. I can't glean any info from less than half of the story. But we'll get back to that kind of topic later. For now, I want to go down the line of some of the major topics brought up, criticized, and etc. Let's start with the requirements for gaining mentorship. Battle mentors need 1,000 instances completed, 1,500 commendations, and one of each roll to 80 with the roll quests also completed. Craft mentor is one crafter and one gatherer to 80, 100 collectibles crafted, and 300 gathered. Let me also just shove that aside with a quick, crafter mentor is worthless. Like, I could do that in an afternoon on a character with Ishgard unlocked. You don't need to know anything to get that done in no time. But that does share something in common with the battle side. You don't need to know anything to get it done. You are more likely to have learned something in the process of those steep requirements, but they're steep in terms of grind, not learning. Commendations don't mean anything. Most people blindly commend tanks and healers because tank and healer. Most people can't tell when a DPS is destroying without a parser, but many people do parse or have higher standards. I am among the people who have higher standards, as I will commend people who I feel are commend worthy, not just playing the role people think is harder, but is probably easier overall. Though, I don't parse anymore, as I've gotten a feel for when people are doing well, just by watching. DPS are unfairly passed over by most people, which while it's nice that more people will tank and heal, a good DPS is no less important to the group. Mentors are here to enjoy the game too, usually. So forcing them on roles they do not like to play is just pointless. They might even be the best tank ever, but forcing someone to tank to fill some arbitrary quota of brownie points? Why? Getting to 80 proves something, I guess, but beyond that, what is it really out to prove? It's made even more worthless when you get to talking about com begging or being a haha wacky joker. The only time, and I mean the only time, I ever got seven commendations in an eight-man fight 
was A11N back when that was relevant. I carried that instance. We wiped three or four times before clearing. Everyone around me kept dying. Only time I ever died, except for when we were wiping, was due to the targeted AoE that requires dedicated healing. Second Wind isn't enough. This is not why I got 7 comms. The reason was because of my Wesker cosplay and glam and making jokes about Resident Evil 5. I wasn't particularly nice, and personally someone being nice isn't grounds to get commendation anyway, but that is how I got 7 comms. From my look. The rabbit hole just gets deeper because of how I mentioned being nice isn't grounds for commendations. Many of you may disagree. That's fine. I won't be commending someone for being nice though. Everyone has different reasons to calm. Commendations, even without specific role bias, are random. Who you get in a duty is random, and their reasons to calm is not going to be the same as the other six people you could have gotten. If they will commend at all. Many people just never bother to commend, probably for challenge log, and that's it. So even if you're some kind of god, you might not even get commendations fitting for a god. Absolute perfect play every instance you do. You are literally a god gamer, the best one who will ever live. But you're a DPS so you'll probably average one commendation per run if you're lucky. And each person only gets to give one commendation, so if multiple people have amazing performances, they're probably all going to get boned. Commendations really are a dumb requirement for a mentorship. It proves nothing, except maybe popularity. But what is a good requirement? One of the most common suggestions I've personally seen is make savage the requirement. Um, no. I'm going to say this in the nicest way I can word it. That is an extremely bad suggestion. Tone aside, it really is a bad idea. For one, people buy clears. You think the run sellers wouldn't make bank on selling mentorship? As if. People buy gill in this game when there's more gill than water in Limsa Lominsa. Clearing Savage also doesn't even mean all that much. Hell, many people would argue that Ultimate isn't even that much. I would disagree personally, but that's still a kind of common stance from what I've seen, at least in the higher end player base. Savage isn't impossible to hard carry, if nothing else, especially the first half of a tier. Further, I know people who have specifically retired from raiding, be it for lack of schedule, lack of drive, lack of physical ability, which I'll get deep into in a bit, or other reasons. I encourage anyone, and I mean anyone, to actually try and go do Savage for yourself. Give it a chance. Aim higher, try and push your limits. But that's not everyone's brand of fun. You can enjoy the core of the gameplay without liking Savage content. Importantly, on top of mentors not needing to do Savage, just because you, if you did do Savage, that doesn't mean you would make a good mentor. Sure, there's a higher chance that you know your stuff, I give the suggestion that much, but that's not necessarily the case, nor are, are you capable of properly explaining how a job works. Self-deprecation and all that aside when it comes to myself, a very common comment I get is how no other guides truly fit newbies even though they're marked as newbie friendly. Maybe this is a side effect of the years I've spent trying to help novices, maybe I'm just naturally good at explaining things on a newbie level. I have to be doing something right to be where I am. I didn't just get lucky, though luck definitely played a huge part in that. Too many people felt entirely lost and had to seek out some loser in a Wesca cosplay. I would even say my own videos have fallen prey to using too advanced of language for my target audience and other mistakes. So what does that say about these other guides? This is also not a comment about how oh, those other guides are bad, just bad for a specific audience. 
If a guide maker releases a new guide for Endwalker all about optimization at level 90, doesn't establish any common terms before going into long-winded explanations and marketed it as a newbie guide? The mark has been missed so far we ended up missing the moon and are currently being slingshotted into the sun. Look at that, killing the warrior of light with darkness wasn't the answer, but mislabeling guide targets was. Point is, that guide is probably really, really well made and it's probably really long and in-depth and a high-end player would benefit and understand everything said. It's a good guide, but a new player would not be able to learn all too well. This is the key difference. So then, who would make for a good mentor? So I spent a lot of time being all down about savage players and such and how that doesn't make them good mentors inherently. But I would agree on the average they are more qualified. They know how to do a proper rotation probably, react to mechanics, etc. if they truly are experienced and not just being carried. They're the types of players who tend to be the ones to create guides and such. While I don't exactly watch a lot of 14 content myself, I feel like most of us content creators and guide makers do at least savage, but not all of them. But I think people massively miss out on the fact that performance isn't the only option. Here I am going to establish a key separation of powers. Knowledge versus execution. When people talk about making savage required, they're too focused on the execution aspect. Execution does not automatically mean you have knowledge too. On the absolute extreme end, there's the idiot savant who doesn't understand anything about what they just did, but apparently just got 100th percentile parse. Now obviously that's a bit much. Nobody gets that far without an element of knowledge, but bear with me. There are people who are strong players, but don't have nearly as much knowledge as the next skilled player. Then there's the opposite end of the spectrum. While I don't doubt their ability to perform, by definition, theory crafting is almost entirely about knowledge and running the numbers. Execution doesn't come into play yet, and I'm willing to say most players have an abundance of knowledge far beyond their execution. I sure as hell fall into that. I have high execution, I would say, for Dragoon at least. I parse generally well, and I am capable of ultimate raiding. But I'm basically a one-trick pony, hoping the new melee is definitely for sure a maiming job to spread my wings. I made a guide for every job, and while there's mistakes here or there, I am proud of the work I have done so far, and I want to continue to develop myself both in-game and out. But if you just asked me to play Summoner out of the blue, I would fall flat on my face. I'd like to consider myself above average in casual content, but throw me into the deep end with an unfamiliar job and I will probably struggle. Ideally, a good mentor will have a decent amount of both execution and knowledge, but someone with all execution or all knowledge both fit within mentorship. Because, let me blow your mind here, neither of these matter as much as everyone tends to think they are. Mentorship takes all sorts of people to properly fill out the roster. People good on execution, people good on knowledge, but most importantly, people willing to engage. A lot of detractors of Novice Network tend to brag about how awesome of a mentor they would be, which is ironically the thing they tend to say is so bad about Novice Network. The important part of the system is the novices, but high skill or knowledge doesn't fill cues. It doesn't get them into the Novice Network. But a generous mentor with time who is willing to talk to novices and do content with them does. As long as they're not trying to act like the foremost expert on what they are playing, why should we get rid of these players by locking it behind Savage or something? People want friendly and helpful and all that. If you specifically expect all mentors to be elite, 
you're spitting in the face of that and actively asking for elitism. But you're still missing out on a bigger picture. What makes someone nice? Here are four statements. Which ones would you consider rude? Which would you consider fine and nice? I'm willing to bet you would struggle to find someone who arrived at the exact same answer you did because you want to know why? Here are the statements I consider to be rude. One of the most common criticisms I've seen about mentoring and giving advice etc when talking about a later topic is that I should use more emoticons. However, I consider that extremely rude, extremely patronizing, and I would be less offended being called an idiot. The tone of a message is self-ascribed. What is nice to you is mean to someone else, so expecting only one type of player in mentorship loses people just as much. Everyone should give each other the benefit of the doubt when reading a message. Don't automatically jump to conclusions. If you're going to assume anything, assume they're trying to be helpful in their own way. Communication is a two-way street. Say something if you feel attacked, but without attacking them back. Either A, they will apologize, or B, they'll probably double down even ruder, which just means you get to report them. Tangential parts aside, I hope you understand my argument so far. Overall, there is no one answer to qualify someone as being a mentor. We need lots of people willing to help, willing to give good advice, and in general, people who aren't around to troll. Which, the next topic ends up drawing in a lot of those people. A big fuss made about Novice Network and the mentor system is the crown. A wholly unique icon that only those qualified mentors can wear. And due to the symbology of a crown, many people desire it. Some to flex that they are a mentor, others just because it's a crown. This has led to many to call it the Burger King crown. There's so much disdain for the icon, people distract from the more important issues. One of the biggest suggestions for a fix of the crown is to turn it into a watering can ignoring the entire point of their own fix. People want the crown because it's unique and has further connotations beyond a generic icon. A watering can is a unique icon and has further connotations beyond a generic icon. Your solution is the exact same problem. Maybe it would be a lower audience, but I actually argue it would be a larger audience given the casual nature of the game. There's this thing called the, uh, the Island Sanctuary. Endwalker not only proves my point years after the first time I made it, but retroactively made all arguments in favor of a watering can icon moot. Wouldn't that be the perfect fit for someone who spends tons of time in the Sanctuary Farm, growing crops with their watering can and watering can icon? Even before this, there's no proper gatherer icon for mentors. The trade mentor icon fits more for crafting, and a watering can would fit more for gatherers. Plus again, it's a unique icon. Personally, if I was just doing this for an icon, I'd sooner become a mentor for a watering can than a crown. And given that more casual nature of the game, and how we're getting an entire Stardew Valley part of the game, many people probably agree on this. There is no stopping it just by changing the icon. You have to stop it at the source. All of the mentors who are here for the icon would still be here for the icon if it changed, and possibly make the issue even worse. The bad mentors we need to be rid of in a different way. On the icon end, the solution lies with a different party. The fault, quote unquote, lies with those who don't wear the icon. Though I am not inherently blaming them, the majority of these people have good reason to keep it off, to which the individual blame travels further to those reasons. Due to the generally maligned attitude toward the system, many mentors who do genuinely help on a daily basis don't wear the crown for various reasons. They may not be confident in their execution during content, 
they may have knowledge instead. Keeping the crown off lowers the chances of being insulted. And I don't know about you, but going back to the feedback on the poll, a lot of people basically admit that they purposefully flame people with the crown if they screw up. Or perhaps they keep the crown off to minimize harassment in general. I always wore the crown, and I would very often be insulted multiple times in a dungeon run for it during the Stormblood era. I'd say that was the peak of the negativity towards the system. One of the few things I am confident in is my ability with Dragoon. So anytime I did a run and got insulted the moment we began, I always made sure to give an extra 100% just to shame the jerks. While their dead bodies littered the field, I'd carefully use my rotation to finish the last 10% of the boss by myself, then gave a cheeky comment about how much they were saying I sucked. This happened more times than I wish I had to admit. This might be coincidence, but around the time I cleared my first ultimate was when these types of players stopped appearing. Oh sure, I still get plenty of jerks in roulette runs, but people attacking for the crown? To me it seems like ultimates are revered just enough by these types of people that they don't dare risk saying something stupid like, Oh look, a mentor, I bet you bought your clear. Because if it turns out that this is a legit raider, there would be so much egg on their face, an ostrich would gaze in wonder about how huge the egg was. Again, it might just be coincidence that mine stopped, but harassment of anyone wearing the crown is definitely a thing that drove many people away. These harasses are their own topic, we'll get more into in a bit, but for now let's get back to the people who have the crown off. The point I want to make here is, how many good mentors would turn the crown on and blow the minds of these people? How many, oh, this person isn't a mentor and they helped me so much comments are actually unknowingly praising a mentor who turned off the crown for fear of retribution? How many mentors have it off for the shame of the icon bringing? We need to stop assuming people are awful just from an icon. Every player is a different player. Stop assuming the worst and the lack of good mentors might be proven false. By shaming the good mentors and giving bad mentors a free pass, you're not helping the system. Don't drive away the good ones and continue to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. Let the people who want to help turn the crown on, and prove everyone wrong about the quality of mentors. Let's just admit it though, this definitely was a self-fulfilling prophecy from the word go. People take a single experience and apply it to everyone they meet. They take one bad mentor and say all mentors are bad, but this isn't a reasonable thing to do. It's unfair even to the mentors you are right about. You thought they were bad before they proved it? For one, confirmation bias. For two, that's just plain rude. I find it especially funny when these people say how great a mentor they would be, or that they're becoming a mentor because everyone else sucks, as if that's not exactly the problem here. Everyone forgets that it's a two-way street that we could easily apply it to anyone. This one random normal player is awful. All players who aren't mentor or novice are all complete trash because this one guy hasn't used a single AoE skill. All normal players need to get out of my game. See how ridiculous that sounds? Or how about novices are all bad and worthless and we shouldn't even bother teaching them. This guy is running around like a blind headless chicken, so all novices are trash and the system is bad because of them and not the mentors. These are extremely terrible statements, but so is saying that one mentor is dead the whole dungeon, so all mentors are bad and we should shun them. This is also ignoring the fact that I doubt most of the harasses are any better themselves. I'm not sure where it comes from, but there's this attitude of being so superior even from novices. I could tell dozens of stories about novices who would ignore advice and say their way was better. Not that they preferred their playstyle, but that it was straight up better. It's not just elitism, though maybe it is and I just can't tell. So many act like tough shit 
and the arbiter of what is good and bad. Then you go to check their FF logs and they don't even have a single savage clear themselves. Guess they don't practice what they preach with what they demand out of everyone else. This mentor had one bad run they know of, and so now they're a much superior god to against the mentor. Yet if we pulled up a parser, they probably did more DPS with multiple deaths than the jerk with no deaths. And yes, this has happened to me personally. I've died multiple times in a dungeon and still been doing more DPS than anyone else. This also goes back to my point about tone and execution versus knowledge. The bad mentor might only be bad on the execution aspect, but if you ask them what a 100th percentile rotation looked like, they could recite a 10 minute perfect uptime rotation to half a second. Or the quote unquote rude tone they use is actually the tone they appreciate most when getting advice. You might be taking an example that isn't even all that bad if bad at all, and you're applying it to a wider player base that does have good players. Have an open mind people. You don't know what's going on behind the screen, what they have or have not done over the last years. You don't know the history. To top it all off, we're people. We're flawed. We have bad days. This could mean having an attitude some days. Not good, but not how they normally act. Even the best players make mistakes in content. They greed when they shouldn't, fat finger the wrong key, and so on. One run is one run. Again, apply this to all other groups and it makes just as little sense to assume run run is all runs. I can go weeks without a single sprout who is willing to listen to advice while they do everything wrong. The week of writing this, every expert run has been extremely slow to the point that I felt like I accidentally took off some gear, but that 530i level says I have it all on. Point is, mistakes will happen to the best of us. Every player is different. Until they unambiguously, absolutely without a doubt prove they are a bad mentor in one way or another, give the benefit of the doubt. We are all people, we are all playing the game, and this goes in all directions, not just mentors. Be willing to criticize and take criticism but don't purposefully be mean about it. But of course, there comes a point for many where it is objectively proven. Another of the major, major issues with how people use the system is refusal to hold people to account instead of abandoning the system. So many people claim that there are mentors being bad or abusing the system and when asked if they reported, they say no, they did not report. To me, that says they're lying. Because while the GM system in this game is definitely flawed as well, while working on this video, that whole RP fiasco happened, reporting does work. I know multiple cases of people who got in trouble from being reported for abuse of the system. One person was spamming a lot, refusing to stop, and being unapologetic about it they visited Morty in jail. There's a lot more to that story, but to sum it up, they were in the wrong. Another time, a novice kept spamming spoilers to Avengers Endgame the week it came out. They disappeared for a while. Another time, I was literally stalked outside the game. Yeah, I had to deal with stalking over someone being so angry that they got put in time out for being an asshole. They started stalking me outside the game. The ironic bit, th this is this is the genius bit, okay? The ironic bit is that they were one of those morons who unironically used the term snowflake as an insult. So lacking in self-awareness, they stalk someone over a 30 minute time out because they got so offended from being an asshole. Someone who insults with snowflake while being the biggest snowflake in the room. They spent three weeks harassing and stalking me, harassing and spamming other mentors, acting like they were hot shit when they cheated their way into becoming a mentor, then disappeared forever when the GMs finally intervened. Three weeks. The system is slow even when fault is so extremely obvious. 
even when there are a good dozen reports within a week. So when you refuse to take the five minutes it takes to report these people, you're tacitly acknowledging and giving your support to these people. If you want any changes, if you want any of these people to be rightly punished, you have to do your part to hold others to account. If you just abandon the system, you actively want things to be bad. You can't just complain that there is racism and anti-semitism and then not file a report. If you did file a report, good, thank you, do it more. If you get falsely kicked, write a report. If people are using slurs, write a report. If any of these people are so bad as you say they are, write a report and they will get in trouble. You're either being hyperbolic to continue your confirmation bias, or they're going to get a visit to the GMs. It will take a while, but if they're actually that bad, it will happen. But not everyone is a stalker or a Nazi. Some people are just ignorant, often purposefully so. Or maybe they just have a colorful vocabulary that doesn't include slurs, but plenty of cursing. Bad advice does happen all the time. Sometimes even good mentors get stuff wrong and need to be corrected. This is a community effort. Hold each other to account with information too. A keyboard and mouse player isn't going to be as knowledgeable about controllers as a controller player on the average. Don't let them flounder while they at least attempt to answer questions on controller. Interject with quick and proper answers as a learned controller player. That goes back to mentors requiring all types of players even. Everyone has their own expertise. Controller versus keyboard, battle versus craft, dragoon versus not dragoon. Some mentors even quote unquote mentor in glamour. The number of questions we get about glamour is pretty high. And that just moves into questions that are more opinion based, like the people who want opinions on jobs and not asking which one is the best, why people like one job or hate another. Mentorship is a team effort, not individual. There can be problem individuals for sure, but if you have a single bad experience in a single run, you shouldn't apply it to the entire system. Hold individuals to account, both as a means to keep everyone in line and to help each other out and teach even learned players things they didn't know. And this doesn't just apply to mentors either. Good mentors have to keep fighting to help people not just against bad mentors, but bad novices too. I'd like to start off this section by referencing a Reddit post in January of 2021. The poster attempted to give advice to 76 players across two months of leveling roulettes, and the numbers are extremely telling about the nature of the player base. 41 of the players gave no response when given advice, and only 6 of those people listened to the advice. All 17 players who gave a negative response to advice did not listen to the advice. 10 players gave neutral responses, and only one did not listen to the advice. And all 8 players who responded positively fixed their issues. That's right, only 23 of 76 players given advice took the advice. The topic title says 80, but the numbers don't exactly add up. Less than a third of players, when given advice, actually took the advice. The bonus points are extra spicy. Every non sprout healer who did no DPS was extremely negative, and sprout tanks generally were unresponsive. These numbers are heartbreaking. People are so quick to blame the mentors. But really, look at the numbers here. They're so poor, it's no wonder so many people give up on mentoring. That's where another subsection of the good mentors went. They gave up because day after day after day, nobody would listen or even would hurl insults at them. How many dungeons do you do that nobody says a word, not one word, not even hello? How many times have you given advice only to have it spit back at you? 
how many times was in no response and no change? I'm going to guess a lot. So much so, most players, not even just mentors, have stopped trying to give advice during runs, ever, to save themselves time and heartache. Mentors need to not give up, be willing to fight against the odds even if two thirds of the player base cannot be saved. There's an entire third of it who are willing to learn, and the rest of you need to stop blaming every bad player on mentors. All of us who are trying are fighting against a tide on all sides. People who hate mentors implicitly, people who blame mentors for every little thing, and so many people who, even though they joined the novice network, refuse to take advice. They are right and you are wrong, even if you can mathematically prove them wrong. One guy in particular I always bring up, let's call him Terry. Terry was the best samurai ever. Samurai wasn't even one year old yet, but he was the best one ever. Higginbana is bad. So is Hakakure. Midare is the only EI jutsu you should use. Terry is a god. All of those statements are false. Higginbana is your best EI jutsu. Hagakure was stronger than Midare. Keep in mind this is the Stormblood version of Samurai. So Hagakure worked completely differently, but it was better than Midare. And Midare is a noob trap. But Terry was the best samurai ever, and proceeded to block basically every mentor who told him he was wrong. No matter how nicely or however they phrased it, everyone who disagreed was wrong and got blocked. People like Terry are so common, I deal with them weekly. People only here to cause trouble, to troll, to insult people, to use slurs and cry thought police when people ask them not to be an asshole, then double down with even more insults. Again, I was stalked, the Avengers spoilers person, the weird creeps, a literal actual, like actually this is real, flat earther Nazi. This is the shit we have to deal with to actually keep things peaceful. And then when we try to be helpful, we get more ridicule. Hey, hey, this just happened and I had to just stop everything to prove a point and include this in the video. A novice who even says they had to do research to come up to their conclusions was shouting about how imbalanced this game is, when as far as numbers go, it's incredibly balanced. No game can be perfectly balanced. That is a fact. But. Numbers are so tight that unless you are a top, top player, it won't matter if at all. All of the mentors were saying not to care about that stuff and to pick a job that is fun and play that because you like that job and that ability is what matters. Hey, remember that meta video I did? If you didn't watch that, you may want to watch that quick. And by quick, I mean half an hour. So, that guy got kicked for being a jerk and saying ignore everyone but him and etc. Again, this was a novice. But then a mentor came in to say how that guy was right and how we need to do our research because we were all wrong and started threatening people because of the kick. After they were soundly told off and the conversation finally moved on, they began to slash tell harass me. And this is why I added this little interjection. I used to like you, but now I see how you guys run the Novice Network and you are just casual trash that spread misinformation. Also, FF Logs has the meta. Dancer is not meta. So let's look at FF Logs. Dancer, 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 bard, dancer. Dancer, bard, bard, dancer, 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 
Bard, 10 seconds behind number one. Dancer, 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 bard, dancer, 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 dancer. Dancer. Dancer is not meta. Oh right, these people don't even know what they're talking about! And this is also why we need so many different types of people doing mentorship. Because what if we only had those people? I'm going to finish this section saying that people don't double check the advice they are given. And this is why you should. There is no one source of info. I am not the only source of info on this platform, on YouTube, nor should I be. Go check other guides, more advanced guides. There's a wide world out there. Double check your info and don't listen to these idiots who say their own sources prove their argument when it says the exact opposite. Ah! How do these people come up with this stuff? It's used in almost every speedrun and dancer is not meta. How? How do you think this? How do you say FF Logs is proving you right when every single one is using it almost? Ah! Oh, how? We all make mistakes, including me, but benefit of the doubt again. No matter how much we are willing to help, no matter how many people are not willing to listen and then beyond that how many people are actually willing to check that the given advice is right or even look for more advice beyond what they are given the road to hell is paved with good intentions another of the big criticisms of the system is the fact that mentors get rewards this is a separate complaint to the crown usually. The complaint is mainly about mentor roulette and how it should give zero rewards because mentors should work for free and blah 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 blah. This is ignoring a large number of the finer details, even if the core concept is sound. To begin, let's start with what mentor roulette is. Mentor roulette is a special level cap instance that contains every duty find a duty in the game with two exceptions. The first is current expansion extreme fights. So currently we're in Shadowbringers. All Shadowbringers extremes are not in the roulette, but the extremes from Stormblood and earlier are all in it. The other exception is Savage difficulty and higher level raids. So Coils, Alex Savage, Omega Savage, and Eden Savage, and Pandemonia Savage as of Endwalker. And also, not in the roulette, is ultimate fights, as they are technically higher level. But something like Susano Extreme or Zervan Extreme, these are in the roulette. You could get a guild hest one day and then have to deal with Titan Extreme the next. And this is on top of the normal rules of roulettes taking place. You don't know who you're gonna get. You could get good players. You could get horrible players. Try clearing Remove Extreme with a party who chain pools, doesn't listen to anything you say, and never makes it to ad phase and the 60 minute timer. This is an experience more than once that I have had. Sometimes there's other mentors in there, often it's just me with 7 sproutlings who treat me like chopped liver. I've tried making macros to direct people with spammy noises to go completely ignored. I have also gotten past ad phase with one or two groups, but those are the rare groups. Victories in extreme level fights can be done. I've cleared every A Realm Reborn Extreme in Mentor Roulette except Ramu Extreme, but that's with a lot of failures besides too. Partly due to jerk mentors who don't want to do effort, part because of novices who don't do effort. All the same pitfalls I already went over with being mentor apply here even more because the crown is forced on. Even people who keep the crown off, if they do the mentor roulette, 
the crown is forced on. Multiple people have cataloged their road to 2,000 mental roulettes and have had interesting notes, to say the least. I highly recommend finding one of these, and I want to do my own version of this experience at some point, when my mental fortitude has been built up enough to handle that much abuse. But I have heard from novices in the channel that they've been having good luck with extreme fights, so perhaps there's hope for that. But why would someone do this roulette? Aside from helping, as that's the argument of how it should work. Well, the roulette gives 40 tomes. 30 of the uncapped level 80 tome, and 10 of the capped tome. 40. That's it. The idea that anyone is doing it for the tomes, and yes, people argue that the tome reward is too much, is just baffling to me. I could go do trial roulette and get double the reward for as much or even less effort. Nobody's doing Mentor Roulette for the tomes, don't even pretend. Giving Mentors nothing is also pointless too, especially after all the abuse they get. I get all my weekly tomes from Expert Roulette, I don't even get those tomes, but I've never felt like it was fair to say that Mentors should get nothing for offering their time. I would even argue the rewards are too low for the risk. The real issue comes into play with achievements. I mentioned a journey to 2,000 roulette runs. This is a series of achievements for doing milestones of Mentor Roulette. I believe it's 100, 500, 1,000, maybe 1,500 in there, and 2,000. There's a title, some glamour items, and at 2,000 is the extremely rare Astrope Mount. When this first came out, this one was one of the very, very few two-person mounts in the game. The idea of a four-person mount wasn't even a thing yet, let alone the eight-person mounts we are getting in Endwalker. It's huge and immediately recognizable as a special mount. If anything was a flex, this mount was. Naturally, this drew a lot of the false mentors who got the crown as a flex. Most of them are the types who would harass novices, chain pull extremes to get kicked out or waste people's time, or just outright leave upon entering. And this is where I want to extremely note that I do know this system has problems, yet there are people we need to be rid of. But I waited this long to outright say all this because of how many other issues there are and how unfairly maligned mentorship is. There is no defending this behavior. The attitude I have for Mentor Roulette is the attitude I have for Main Scenario Roulette, and even all roulettes. You can whine all you want later about how awful it is that you got some extreme fight, but if you get an extreme fight, you take that extreme and work your best. If you got Praetorium, you watch those 40 minutes of cutscenes. You don't have to like it, but you have to do it. That's the point of roulettes. But these aren't the only mentors out there. I don't know if Nabby Yang is out there watching this, but shout out to you for the 500th time. I always use you as the example of what it takes whenever I'm talking to anyone about mentor roulette and all this stuff. Shiva Extreme. One of the only times I actually managed to clear it with mentor roulette was with Nabby tanking. They tanked flawlessly. I attribute that clear entirely to them. There are more people like Nabby out there, and that's what we need to focus on more. Don't stop wanting to get rid of the bad mentors, but also help push more good mentors into the system. The issues I already went over are why it's so hard to get the good mentors into the system. There are jerk mentors, there are jerk normal players who attack mentors for existing, there are jerk novices who refuse to listen, jerks jerks everywhere. Every place we improve is more players actively wanting to participate in the system. These are community wide problems, not just within the scope of mentorship, and we all have to do our part to fix them. And again, stop blaming it all on mentors. This issue existed back even before the Mentor system existed. But back to the Mentor Roulette. Again, 
I like the tome reward. I don't particularly subscribe to the idea that Mintish should get no rewards. I can't say the chosen reward at the end of 2000 roulettes was thought out with a western mindset, but this isn't a western company. I also recall Yoshi P saying that mentor requirements are so low because if they weren't, most of the west wouldn't have enough mentors, though I cannot find that source of that anymore. The mount was a bit overkill. If it was more generic, you still would have gotten a few people piling on, but much less of them, and I wonder if we'd be having this discussion at all. Sure, there would be complaints about the crown, but even if the mount was unique, Chocobo number 12 isn't as enticing for a grind of 2,000 duties. Which, remember for reference, is double the requirement to become a mentor. This far in, I don't see any reason to change it. The damage has already been done, and the people who would flood the system for rewards have much cooler and better options at this point than Astrope. This is just even more reason to focus on adding good mentors to the system and actively trying to make it a good place to be. That in itself fixes the number of bad mentors by flooding them out with good ones. One of the best ways to do that is within the Novice Network itself. Novice Network is its own little community. And there's this weird complaint I see all the time, and that's a comment I see many times within the poll I held. And that's the fact that people use Novice Network as a quote-unquote social link shell. My counterpoint? So? Genuinely, what what is the issue here? What is the issue? As long as things to stick to PG-13 topics, no insulting garbage with racism and such, and novices get their questions answered, what's the problem? There is a big, big difference between a social link shell and places where rampant ERP and being an asshole is tolerated, especially when you can report both of these away. I don't see the inherent issue. In fact, many novices would also disagree. This is an MMO. Social aspects are intended, and the social aspect of novice network should be encouraged. Many, many, many novices outright enjoy the fact that novice network is there to talk to. Many don't want to leave because of how much they enjoyed both the help and company, at least over on Midgard. People like discussion. Many people will ask about free companies in Novice Network too. They don't know where to look, that community finder even exists, etc. Many others can't find free companies they enjoy. I am one of them. Chatting with mentors and novices about this or that is enjoyable enough in between questions. This was actually something almost everyone who named a server and was positive about Novice Network said. That they liked the community within it. That people would often stop the conversation entirely just to answer questions, and it was rare that a question would be missed. And if that is what is happening, not the ERP, not the attacking each other, if that is what is happening, being friendly and answering questions in between? What is the problem? Let people have fun together, let people socialize. That's even how you get more people wanting to be mentors. The ecosystem moves forward, people come and go, some mentors quit the game, new mentors need to fill the gaps, build a friendly community, and it will sustain itself and thrive. That isn't to say I like everyone in Novice Network, nor should I. This is an MMO again, and by its nature, there will be tons of people who do or do not share the same views on how to mentor, or how to advise, or etc. Which is fine, it takes all types. But by nature of people being different, and a wide variety of people being drawn in, disagreements and arguments will happen. There really isn't a way around that. Even with everyone on the same page of trying to foster a positive environment, people will disagree on stuff. Pineapple on pizza. Which Final Fantasy is the best and why the answer is objectively Final Fantasy XII. 
that kind of stuff. Some people get a bit over enthusiastic and even go for insults. But also usually that's the novices doing that. Anytime someone posts spoilers of any kind, they get a telling off, but that's about it. No kick, no continued harassment. Hey, don't do that in here. This is a spoiler free channel. At most we'll get one mentor who starts being all, oh, there's no such things as spoilers. But a whole one hour argument will ensue with four to five novices along with that one mentor circle jerking each other that spoilers don't matter, despite there being other novices saying they care about the story. People will argue about anything and the aim needs to be about minimizing these arguments. You will never prevent them entirely. On top of the Nazi and the stalker, I've been outright harassed by a mentor who a lot of people actually like. You know what I did? Well, besides first reporting them, I used the blacklist. This is a function. It should be used. Encourage reporting and blacklisting where relevant, but also don't make mountains out of molehills. Calling somebody an asshole? Sure, go off and report and all that. If your issue is just with specific wording of their advice, there's bigger problems like the open harassment that are being ignored. This also goes back to holding people to account to. If someone is being a bit too intense, warn them and ask them to tune it down. You might even get an apology if they actually care. Again, it's about working together, fostering a community, and assuming the best of people. Then after they inevitably disappoint you, feel free to be all down and out about it like normal. But give people a chance first. Those functions are the best we're gonna get, and we should use them. All of this in mind, everything we discussed so far, if you agreed with me at any point, you already agree with me that a feedback system would never work and be outright abused. I do actually like this suggestion, don't get me wrong, but I know it would never work. In a perfect world where all mentors are great and perfect players who never do anything wrong, there would still be negative reports. As I said, there are people who attack mentors on site. These people would give bad feedback on site too. So any level of consequences for bad mentors would immediately see dividends on good mentors. The rest of the feedback would be null and void because of how many people don't even give commendations, let alone full on feedback. That's really the proof here. Commendations are already an imaginary MacGuffin so many people don't even give out that doesn't even mean anything. Even if they mean something to you personally, so many people are using them in their own random ways that it never actually means what it does to you. And a mentor commendation or review or anything like that would just end up the exact same way. This is on top of everything I said. One bad run is not a big enough sample size that any theoretical system would hopefully take into account. What is nice to you is rude to someone else. Execution versus knowledge and how many people are outright adverse to any and all advice. One thing I haven't gone over yet in detail is reporting and how much people try and use it as a petty form of retribution. Earlier I suggested reporting pretty heavily, so let me emphasize the distinction here. ERP in public is against TOS. Racial slurs and other stuff like that against TOS. Kicking someone from Novice Network for these things not against TOS. There is a way to abuse kicks too, which let me also mention that only mentors can kick people from Novice Network. It's a temporary kick, 30 minutes for novices, 3 hours for mentors. One person in the poll suggested a mentor was kicked for giving good advice. In that case, a report is warranted. Kicks for breaching TOS are not. I have been threatened hundreds of times by now with being reported for kicking people for being jerks or such. I've yet to be banned so it's pretty clear to me that my kicks are almost exclusively valid kicks. I won't say 100% just because, as I said, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. We all do. And yet, almost every 
single time, I either get some petty quip about what a moron I am, or a snowflake from the person being offended at a 30 minute timeout, or how I'm being reported for abuse. Over, and over, and over. But take one look at the logs and their comments range from trolling to outright attacks, given two or even three warnings before even getting kicked finally. This is a common attitude we deal with. This is the garbage we have to survive day in and day out. And this is the same player base who would use the feedback system. Not for real feedback, for retribution. To be the actual abusers. For every person who genuinely would use the system properly, there is a handful of others who would just abuse it as far as it can go. And you know, all I've heard over the years is that's what mentors do. But nobody ever takes a moment to consider the reverse side of things. After all that, I want to take my experiences, my views, everything, to suggest real changes that could be implemented at would actually work. Or at least I think would work. This is where you all come in to poke holes in my suggestions. I poked holes in all the other suggestions I've seen and heard over the years, so it's only fair as everyone pokes holes that they can find in my suggestions. Just expect rebuttals in the comments in the same way I am expecting rebuttals to my arguments. The first major change I want to see is with Novice Network. For mentors, turn off the auto join. After initially being invited for the first time, novices turn on auto join for the network upon logging in. They can leave at any time so that's good that auto join is a thing for them. They don't need to get invited daily, that would be annoying. Mentors though, we have the option to duck in and out of Novice Network as we please. In the Midgardsamore Novice Network, there are maybe 20 active mentors, 30 if you extend the requirements to just people who occasionally talk, but you might only see them for one hour once a week. The rest of them do not talk. Ever. And yet they take up space. They probably don't even have the Novice Network on to see the chat and lurk. There can only be 100 mentors in Novice Network at any given time. So if you have 80 people who don't talk ever and 30 people who want to talk, chat, answer questions, be mentors, 10 people are going to be locked out. This is especially a problem when expansions launch. Endwalker is soon so it's going to be really bad. The game sees a marked increase in the player base all around. So if we go from 80 mentors on an off day that don't talk, we go to 150 mentors that don't talk and we actively have to fight to get into the network. This is a genuine issue for the people who are actually around to help. This is entirely, and I am sure of this, entirely because of the auto join. If mentors had to actively, manually join Novice Network every day, we would see no negative impact on the mentors who actually want to help while seeing a huge decrease in the people who don't ever touch Novice Network taking up the limited space. Especially because there's an AFK timer. 30 minutes AFK and you get auto kicked from Novice Network to make room for other mentors. You have to manually rejoin. So we already do this. The next fix I have is on the novice end. I mentioned earlier something about inviting. If you were not aware, the only way for a novice to join Novice Network is to be invited. If nothing else, at level 15, the main story quest should give newbies the option to join the network of their own accord. The story already has us pass by the novice hall on the way to Sastasha, so giving this option wouldn't even take much additional work. As it stands, something here needs to change. The current system is just bad. As a mentor, I am in charge of bringing new novices into the system. We have to go into the player search, 
filter to only just newbies and returners who do actually have a manual way into novice network and right click their names and click invite one by one but it's not that simple either this player is level two i will never invite someone level two as there is a very high chance they're a bot anyone level three or higher is where i invite but do sometimes try to get into the novice network to spam it so we do have to care about this so maybe it could be anyone who has the full game purchased is able to go into the novice network of their own accord and free trial players have to get invited there's also the bots with the spaghetti names and it's unlikely they will ever spam the network as those are the guild farm bots who probably don't even have the spam messages programmed in there is also the fact of some people being busy, already being in novice network, having invites auto reject, being in battle or cutscene, etc. They will all not be able to get in. And this isn't a free company where we benefit from having more people in the system. Inviting is, in itself, the reward and helping the people we invite. It's also punishment because it takes so long. One player search use is 200 players, and that's not even the full list of online players. The people who are online cycle, and multiple people in the poll complain that they were never even given an invite to the system. We want to play the game too. Giving advice and keeping peace is already a job in itself. Having to spam invites just to get painful and feels super scummy. I hate hate blind invites for free companies i feel like i'm trying to be used to make them richer since free company credits buy boons that's why i mentioned inviting novices doesn't really benefit us inherently but it still feels awful to do and there's too many people to manually ask if they want to join the network especially since the invite tells you what the system is about hell Tons of novices don't even know about free companies and what blind inviting even tends to be about. If I have to continue to manually invite, fine, but I don't like it. It feels bad for so many reasons and it's so easy to miss people. How many people am I missing when I try to invite that would love to be in the system? There's already infrastructure to join on your own. Novices should have access to this not just returners end of story my final suggestion is on the icon if we truly want to fix any and all problems the crown causes we need to limit when it displays this is something else that's already in place and just needs a few tweaks make the crown only display in novice network and during mentor roulette runs that's it that's the solution no matter what you make with the crown, a watering can, a tree, a poop emoji, people will want it. The only fix to the icon is to only display it when relevant. This isn't a good fix, because as a mentor, your job doesn't just end when you walk out the door. But the compromise is to only allow crowns when you are inside Novice Network which just flies in the face of my previous suggestion to reduce the number of people who waste space in Novice Network and actively push out the people who are around to help. It also goes against my main goal, making people less down on the system in general. If we flood with good mentors, they wouldn't be able to show off that they are good mentors outside of the network with the crown. I already made the point that many mentors may not be wearing the crown outside Novice Network and could prove the prevailing opinion wrong. Removing the crown from this place would just continue that problem. But that's the best I can come up with there. People will want the icon no matter what, but if you can only have it within a limited space, that'll turn them off from the icon entirely. I still want a watering can though. Let me repeat the following for those of you who forgot. My views are not inherently any more valid than anyone else. I'm just someone with a lot of experience actually trying to use the system as it was intended. I too make plenty of mistakes, but I've been watching discussion on this topic flounder for years with no real moving forward. I want to foster 
real discussion, not just constant comments about who is at fault. I want to bring in more mentors who want to help, clear up misconceptions, and actually discuss the system and the community as a whole. People who spout great community, by the way, are usually acting in bad faith. But they're also not wrong. The community as a whole has problems, and ignoring it won't make it go away. I know I'm asking for the moon here, but if Yoshi P can give it to us, so can we as a community. Let's be better, let's make the system live up to its promise, and maybe, just maybe, lead to real change from the developers themselves. But on top of all that, there is an audience of people willing to be helped. I have a platform because of these people. The amount of support I've received in such a short time is astounding. And it proves, it proves that there are tons and tons of people who do want to improve. They're what's important. Not the petty squabbles, not the people wanting Crown to be special, not the people who even ignore advice, but the people who do genuinely want to learn. I'm just some nobody. They're the reason why the system exists. Let's put all the egos away and be the change we want to see. Take care, and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. An extra thanks to those who gave feedback for this video since this is bigger than me so I didn't want to just be all me, I wanted some eyes on this one. And an extra, extra thanks to all of my Patreons over on the Patreon. And the extra, extra, extra thanks to those in the Big Dragon category who are Aryadeva, Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olsen, Evan, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Meowfi, and Vala LLC. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the link is down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.